Welcome once again to the JLo Artist YouTube channel. Thanks for joining me on this artistic adventure. Today we'll be working with ink, pen and ink. So have your kneaded eraser, a number two or an HB pencil handy, and any type of ink that you would like to use. But make sure that it's archival, that it's permanent, that it's black, and a smooth ink. And let's start doing some ink drawing. Thanks for being here, by the way, um, and for drawing with me. When we're drawing with ink, you kind of choose things that not only are interesting, but have some good contrast to them, as well as little areas that you can just totally leave out. So there's a ton of stuff, um, not only on her outfit, like around the, the, the lightest parts, but even on her neck and her, and her face and her shoes that you could just totally leave out. Um, just let them blend into the background and all the ice that's behind her if you wanted to put some little lines in there or something You probably could but I, I don't think that's a big deal I love the dark around her dress here and her her sleeve uh, and up this this part of her sleeve and her hair of course So those are going to be the defining things those are the things we're really going to concentrate on is that contrast so the first thing is, is what do you do? How, how do you figure out how big you want to make it? Well, of course, you can start at the bottom. Leave, leave yourself a little bit of space on the bottom. So I can say, well, I want her feet to be right there. So you can just put in a little line, a little edge to say that's about where the feet go. And then you can say, well, I want her head to be over here somewhere. You just maybe put a little edge over there. That will establish the size you need it. And you can kind of stick figure it out. You can say, well, if that's her head, that's the size of her head, and then her body kind of curves down. And remember, we were talking about the load-bearing leg. Even as she's leaning back, look where her thorax is, where that little, that little divot between her clavicles is. And you come back down here, and that's about where that foot's got to be. If you put it too far forward, it looks like she's going to fall backwards. If you put it too far back, it, it looks a little little funny. But that that heel, her load-bearing leg heel is right there. So I can just go in there and say that's where her heel, the heel is. And then I can just curve the rest of her. Maybe I'm going to do it just, I think I'm going to move her over just a little bit. I'm a little uncomfortable with her head right against the edge there. I want to... Give her a little bit of space there. So I'm going to move her over just a little bit. And if you go straight down from where her head is, that's where her other leg is. You can even just block that in with like a triangle and say that's that's her foot. That's her other her other leg. You can come up over. And I may want to move her up a little bit. I think I'll move her up just a little bit. So our little stick figure there just tells us where to, to, to put things. How big you want to make it. And you can adjust it from there too. Now, when you're doing uh, any kind of figure study... The the idea that, you know, the length of her head is the same length of her arm, but what if her arm is in foreshortened, like this upper arm is? You can't really do that. So you just kind of have to compare it to everything else. Say, well, you know, where is it compared to everything else? So just start comparing everything, you know, that whole comparing where the foot is compared to the other foot. The distance between the ankle and the knee is about the same distance as between the knee and the hip. And so in order to get your, your legs kind of the right proportion, you can do that. You can use your pencil to measure.
remember um, all your all your bones, like her leg is going to curve. Her her thigh curves out. The lower leg curves in. So there's kind of an S curve there. This is almost a gesture drawing. I mean, there's there's no detail. I'm just trying to get the the gist of it. I keep adjusting and adjusting. She is leaning way over. Wow. I have to tell you guys. As I watch these people do their gymnastics and athletic things, I am totally amazed. It amazes me what the human spirit can do. Totally amazing. The last thing you want to do is is just get rid of things that you don't need with your kneaded eraser. And you kind of want to get rid of as much graphite as you can anyway because that graphite is going to smear. And you don't really don't want to bother with all that smearing and stuff. And nothing here has to be perfect. And we can always come back into it and do other things with it, too. We need to. Whatever we need to do. Her, her face is very important. So um, you can go in and just, with your pencil, just kind of figure out where things are, where the nose is. Mouth chin that's kind of important a lot of people get the ears wrong just remember top of the ear corresponds with the top of the eyebrow so we go with the eyebrow, and you have to kind of arch it because her head is round. And as you arch it, you just get the top of the ear right there. The tip of the nose, the same thing. You just kind of arch it over. There's the tip of the ear. And I'm just going to put little sausages for the fingers because the detail is going to come with the, the pen and ink anyway. So I'm just going to throw those little fingers in. Both her hands are foreshortened. This one hand is really foreshortened. All you see is a couple of little fingers poking up. The other hand is curved away from you. It's just gone.
So that's basically it. I mean, the rest of it we're going to do with pen and ink. And the pencil is just a guideline, just kind of helping you figure out kind of where things go. So again, there's some areas that you want to concentrate on. Uh, the head is one area. The head and hands are always areas of concentration. And then, then the nice curve of the body. But, but the detail parts, the head and the hands, those are the parts you really want to concentrate on. So I'm going to zoom into them just so you can see what I'm doing. So the first thing that I look at, um, especially on the face, the bridge of the nose. So I'm just going to go ahead and throw that in real quick. Um, and I can use a real thin line there, just the bridge of the nose. And then as it comes up, and there's uh, there's her eyebrows, and kind of throwing the eyebrows, just little zigzaggy lines. And you probably notice that I'm not following my drawing part to the letter. Her eyelashes are also little dark areas. I'm just going to throw those in. A couple little dots and dashes. And right now, that's it. That's all you need. Here's the curve of her cheek. Just a couple little dots and dashes along the curve of her cheek and her nostril. Rather than do a, like a hole in the nostril, I'm going to do a little arch. So just a little, a little arch there. And then I'm going to fill that in with some dashes. Dash, 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 dash. And dots. And leave it at that. Her upper lip is gone. I'm just going to leave that out. I'm going to put in this kind of a, it's, it's, it's almost like a little triangle. And it's just going to kind of come in with little dots and dashes as I go. Then you can see a little bit of her teeth. I'm just going to leave that out and her bottom lip. And you can just do little dots and dashes. And that's about it. That's about all you need. Now, if you needed to, we could go back in and we can add some more. Even her forehead, just a, a little dot there. And as it kind of curves out, you want to put maybe a couple little dots in there. But if I got rid of all that graphite, and I just do something like that, that's about all there is for the head. Even that right below that, that lip, you could put a couple little dots in there to, to show that lip. But the rest of that is gone. It's out. There's a few little dots and dashes for her chin. Right there. And then as it curves, you're just going to leave that out. And then curve that into her neck. Just Barely. Little dots and dashes, and that's it. So with, with pen and ink, there is a ton of stuff you can leave out. Let your viewer have the ability to imagine some of this. Now, I'm going to come back in, and I know I'm going to put in some little dots and dashes in there to get some of those shadows in. But for the most part right now, that's really it. That's all I want to do. Where the ear is, uh, maybe I'm going to come over and do some of the hair. Just little, little lines that go into the hair. And when you do hair, you don't want to draw a line and then shade that in. Just start from the very top where the hair kind of comes out and do these little lines like this along the hairline. If it's not the right place, we can always adjust it. So, like I say, uh, mine is too curved here. It needs to go a little flatter over here. So I'm just going to come back into it, flatten that out a little bit. That looks better. And you can just do that as much as you need to. But that, that hairline needs to be very soft. 
and I'm going to come into it like this, just ever so lightly, just a few little hair, just so it's not even, because it's not it's not totally even. The bun, there's a little more darkness around her bun, so I'm just going to throw that in. If your line is going in the direction that the hair flows, it'll give it the illusion of hair. Not a problem. There's the curve of the ear. And I don't see the rest of this ear, so I'm not going to put it in. Just a couple little dots and dashes. If you don't see it, don't draw it. There's a little... Uh, her ear has these little folds in it, and there's little shadows that are created by those folds. I'm just going to throw those in. And there's an earring. She's got an earring, and it's kind of flipped up. There's probably a lot of G-force in what she's doing. Maybe a little dot right there, and that's it. That's really all you need in the in the ear. Here's your bun. And then I will come back into that, but right now I'm going to get rid of the graphite. It's a lot easier to see what I'm doing once the graphite's gone. But look at how much there is that we didn't draw. Down this neck, I'm not going to do this edge of the neck. I might do a little bit where the necklace is. So here's the necklace, and there's a little shadow under that necklace. A couple little dots and dashes. And if you think, oh, that necklace isn't in the right spot, that's okay. Because as soon as this picture was taken, that necklace moved. So don't be so concerned if everything's not perfect. Once you get the eyes, the nose, and the mouth where they go, everything else will fall into place. Hopefully. Here's some, she's got a little shadow that goes down her thorax, that throat part. I'm just going to throw that in real quick with just little, little dashes. She's got a very strong vein going up her neck. I'm not sure I'm going to throw that in as strong as it is. So again, little dots and dashes. Sometimes you want to simplify things that aren't, real appealing even though they're necessary it's just little dots and dashes and if it's not quite right it's okay You can see her trapezius, that muscle that attaches onto the neck. It goes down the back. So that little triangle right there is her trapezius. And then what defines her outfit is is her uh, is the just the darks of it. There's some little um, seams and things. You can do little dots and dashes, but this little this little shape here, this little swirl, you can throw that in. That defines that part of it. That defines her shoulder as it comes out. And again, you notice, oh, Mr. Lowell, you're not sticking with your drawing. No, because my drawing's not right. It's slightly off. And I expect that. Here's your shoulder over here. I know that this is going to go darker anyway. 
So even if I throw it in like this, I can always adjust it, make it larger or smaller, depending on what I need. thrown in the dark parts. And it doesn't bother you that the neck's gone because your eye makes that connection. It, it says, oh, okay, I get it. I see where it's at. So here's a good way to do fingers. Don't try to do the little knuckles and everything. Find the tips of the fingers and do the little shadow that's under the tip of the fingers. So here's a, a little shadow there on her thumb. And then just continue those shadows down, but don't try to draw like all the knuckles and everything like that. Just, just, just do the little shadows and that's it. Everybody knows that that's a thumb. And if your fingers kind of go together, like, like these two fingers over here kind of go together, all I'm going to do is I'm going to come down and say, okay, the tip of the finger is about right in here. There's the tip of the finger. If, if she's got fingernails, which she does, you might want to do a couple little dots and dashes to say there's a fingernail. But just kind of denote the tip of the finger. And any shadow that you see, dots and dashes, and then that's it. This one's kind of covered up by her other finger. Shadow. That's it. You can always come back in later if you want to, or if you need to. This other other hand where the thumb is, that's kind of, again, kind of hidden. Don't do anything on top. Find the tip of the thumb. Put a little dot or a dash there. A little shadow that's underneath it. And that's basically it. Although this, this part is in shadow, so I'm going to put that just hatched lines. Hatch, 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 hatch. She's got this sleeve that kind of comes up and around. It has all these little, little pearls or something on it. I'm going to put those in as just little scribbles. But I'm not trying to define the sleeve. But those little shapes will define the sleeve for me. And even this other part of her hand, it's gone. I can't see it. Don't put it in. So if I take out anything like that, there it is. It's all it's done for us. Wrinkles in fabric, if you got wrinkles in fabric, you just do these little hatched lines in the direction that the wrinkles go, and that's a wrinkle. And you can also hatch through that whole section there, and that defines the arm as well. So I don't need to draw the arm in. It's already defined now.
Anytime you want to put in a shadow, just put a little hatched lines in there. You got it. Now I'm going to come back into the head and kind of finish some of that hair. Her hair is very dark. I'm going to scribble that in. And very thin little hatched lines to show some some value across the cheek, uh, maybe on the chin. You just need a few. The less you have, probably the better. I might be getting too much in here. But keep it simple. When you're doing hair, pick out the darkest areas, throw those in, and if your line is in the direction the hair flows, it'll give it the illusion that it's hair. Little areas that are a little darker, a little heavier than others. Sometimes I'll just do little zigzags. I cannot see what's going on in the bun. So I'm just going to scribble through it because it's all dark. Probably has a little net or something around it. I don't know. It's been a long time since I've had a bun in my hair. All right, I've never had a bun in my hair. Remember, you don't want a strong line where the hair is, where the hair starts and stops in the head. So kind of break that edge a little bit. Have some kind of going over the top of it. Now I want to continue on down through. Those are the important parts. And those parts are pretty well done. I mean, th there's more that we could do on them. But for right now, it's probably good. So across her, her, her chest and her stomach there, let me go. those little dots and dashes where the jewels are, it's all you need. Don't try to put a line there. Just leave it out. Let it go. And then when it gets really light, just let it, leave it alone. Whatever you see there. I think this was, she was a swan. She had like a white swan and a black swan. Which is really cool. You think they hire professional uh, costume designers to design their, do they? I would imagine. I bet you that's big business too.
So where her back is twisting, uh, she's got some wrinkles back in there on her outfit. Just little dots and dashes. Don't don't put in lines. Those lines will look silly. I get rid of more graphite. I like it when I get rid of that graphite. I didn't finish that sleeve. Finish that sleeve up. There's probably a reason to this pattern or a rhyme to it, a rhythm. I just threw in some dark shapes. Where the tip of her dress that's kind of flipping out there, a couple little dots and dashes just to show where that is. And she's got, kind of got a broken or a feathery kind of a tip to it. You can just leave it broken. What a relief when I get rid of that graphite. Again, if there's an edge that's hard to see, don't put it in. Just use little dots and dashes to get the darkest areas. And that's good enough. I can get rid of all the graphite. Does it bother you that you don't have a line around everything? Or are you looking at it thinking, oh, it looks better without that line?
And just to make sure that she's got something that she's skating on, I'm just going to put a couple little lines and dots in there so that it's not, she's not levitating, she's not floating. Last thing you want to do is just go over anything that you feel like you need to. Not a ton of detail in here. Can actually add more if we're willing to. When you first started out, you're like, oh, I, I don't think this is going to work out, those lines. And now you look back and go, hey, it's working out. It looks okay. It's amazing what a few little dots and dashes will do, too. Great place to sign it would be right right down here in the front or right over her ankle or heel right there. That would be a good spot, too. So it's up to you. I think I'm going to go right there. Well, I hope you had fun today. hope you did something you've never done before. And I hope it looks better than you thought it would. And hopefully, somehow this has made your life a little bit nicer. I think drawing drawing's good. I mean, Bob Ross used to say, every day is a good day when you paint. I'm going to extend that to drawing. Every day is a good day when you draw. I hope you have a lovely day.